Welcome to the bold analysis. Moses Masika Wetanguda, the former Bungoma senator who is the speaker of the National Assembly, has emerged with another political twist. And this is after there is a lobby group which is a branch of Ford Kenya Party, which is his own party that emerged and endorsed him for the presidency 2032. This move is very suspicious. I want you to watch that. Look at this video here. Good Kenya, Simba, 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 Usawa, Akina, Queen, my party, my choice. Where uh, is the accountability? We have a strategic plan that we have with the combined activities. Tunapokuwa na activity hapa Tanzania. How viongozi wa vijana kutoka Bungoma watakuwa na to join. Now pia tunapokuwa na activity tutakuwa tunawa join tukifanya kazi pamoja. Pia we will also extend those activities ya to recruit members kwa party in other counties the whole country. And we, we know that uh, the party vision, ya kuakisha kwamba party leader wa chama, Moses Masika Wetangula, atakuwa rise 2032, ambayo ndio vision yetu. Yes. Sisi kama chama, tuko na recruitment drive, ambayo kaivi karibuni tunailaunch, na tungeomba umoja wa viongozi wetu katika chama cha Ford Kenya, katika jimbo la Tuanzoya, Na, bu, na, na jimbo la Bungoma. Katika jimbo la Tuanzoya, ningeomba kutuma ujumbe katika ofisi kuu. Kuna vitu ambayo inaendelea. Tafadhali ofisi kuu ishuke hapa Tuanzoya ya kisha kwamba hakuna mtu anatoka kwa chama cha Ford Kenya. Watu anafanya kazi kwa umoja. Hiyo tulipoteza kura last time kwa sababu ya watu kutoka kwa chama. This time we need all the people wake katika chama cha Ford Kenya. Na hayo kwa sababu Katika serikali ya Kenya kwanza, chama cha Ford Kenya kilikuwa hapo ndani, kilipigenia huu ongozi, na walikuwa natuhaidi kwamba kuna hiyo 30%. Tunataka kuona hayo mambo raisi anapo wasili bungomu. Atilete vijana hiyo mambo ambayo tunatarajia. Na tunaimani kwamba anapo kuja mgeni, lazima vile vile, vijana watapata hata kitoweo. Nataka kuwaimiza wenzangu. Njooni tusherekepa moja, njooni pamoja, njooni tupangie pamoja, Ndiyo chama chetu kwenda mbele lazima tushikane because there is power in unity and we should stop pointing fingers but instead embrace dialogue and unity for us to move forward as one chama chetu kina usawa hakina ukweli na sisi kama vijana tunataka viongozi ambao wanawajibika viongozi ambao wako na maono viongozi ambao watafanya kazi kwa ufasaha na kwa manufaa ya mwananchi wa kawaida Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our video. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for making this podcast a big success. And I want us to interrogate this move politically. Moses Masika Wetangula is one is number three in the now the national leadership of the country. President then we have the deputy president, then we have the speaker of the National Assembly. And Moses Masika Wetangula is not the person that crossed over to Kenya Kwanza. But, but I, I insisted, I analyzed some, for those who are founding members of the board, towards the last general election I said here, and I said in this podcast that William Ruti did not need Musalim Davadi. Musalim Davadi was a proxy. The person that was acquired that William Ruto needed was Moses Masika Wetangula. Because if there was someone who was a deal maker, uh, even if there was something to be done on the elections, I tend to believe that uh, Moses Masika Wetangula was more effective than Davadi. And in fact, of the, in terms of the delivery, the day of election, Masika Wetangula was just taking tea in his home. But there is a context into what we were saying. That was just a by the way. There's a context into what we are saying. Mud Wetangula is launching his presidential bid. He's talking about 2032 presidential bid at a time William Ruto is seeking re-election in 2027. Number two, they're talking about 2032 at a time 
the Kenya Kwanza is trying to convince parties to join the Kenya Kwanza as a coalition and make one party like the Communist Party in the China Republic. And so Ford Kenya had declined that they are not going to be absorbed, or rather they are not going to swallow their pride and join that new party. That said, no way. So it's clear that, of course, uh, 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 Ford Kenya is not going, or rather is not going to join the Kenya Kwanzaa. But this has emerged. What exactly is playing out here? Because as to what many would exist, if, if, if what many would think is that those who supported William Ruto and are part of the Kenya Kwanzaa government will be committed at this critical time trying to solicit votes and targeting getting votes for William Ruto in 2027. But what goes wrong? Or from State House team, William Ruto's political and technical advisors, when they listen to, when they realize that Moses Masika Otangula is campaigning for president in 2032, is it not seen as premature? Is it not seen as sabotaging boss? Or how would you, how would you think they are being, it is being perceived? This is something that is a bad. Number two, when Tangula launched his presidential bid, he, there was the mention of his presidential bid, because those things don't just happen, let me tell you. That lobby group, they can't do it without the blessings of Wetangula himself. If it was so, then you will see Wetangula denouncing or rather disassociating himself with those pronouncements. But two days later, he did not emerge and he has not declined or rather denounced or disassociated himself with those pronouncements. So it goes without saying that he was fully behind that move. Remember, it also emerged at a time William Ruto was heading to Mount Kenya, to, 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 to Western Kenya. Um, he was heading to Western Kenya for, um, for the development tour. And so, this is something that has been here. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I want us to look at um, this critically. Before Ruto went to, the week before the Kakamega tour, there is another context. Susan Nahumisha, who I do believe was appointed to cabinet through the influence of Mrs. Masiko Tangula, has been coming under strong criticism and has been on radar amongst the cabinet secretaries that were facing the chopping board that on the radar of being chopped out of cabinet. And so, this is something that has been here. And so, what message did Wetangula want to pass? Wetangula is simply telling Kenya Kwanzaa one thing, that even as they eye 2027, there must be a paradigm shift from Kalenjin Kikuyu, and the shift must include the lawyer aspect and what is being the message being targeted here is very clear it is supposed to it's targeting the Gede Geshagwa what the Gede Geshagwa believes on the political playbook he's running is that I have worked I have supported William Ruta and that's why you will hear him reminding everyone in every political rally when he stands in front of a microphone he will always remind William Ruto that we supported you. And so the support now is also supposed to be given in 2027. And while it is perceived as repaying Uhuru Kenyatta debt, they will also want that Uhuru Kenyatta, or they will also want to, uh, William Ruto to endorse them back by the Rift Valley Engineering. By just taking the simple, uh, simple arithmetic that if I get Kalenjin and Kikuyu behind me, I am already sorted on my presidential bid. So the message your Tangula is passing is very clear. And you just need a political lens to interpret that when Luther will look at 2027 and maybe get the backing or solicit the backing of Kikuyu, the Regadi Geshagwa camp, what your Tangula is saying is we must talk about 2032. For example, who are you endorsing for 2032 for presidency? And from what they might perceive, they might actually see that they will want the topmost seat. That is why Wetangula 
that's what the message we talk about is passing there. Number two, um, there is the question of Bungoma factor in Ruto re-election. Moses Maseka Wetangola believes that the Kenya Kwanzaa, uh, William Ruto, got more votes in Bungoma than the other counties merged together. The home constituency of um, the home county of Salim Davadi Vihiga County, Randall Dinga got more votes than Salim Davadi. Same to Kakamega and same to Bungoma. In fact, same to Busia. In fact, William Ruto got more votes in Bungoma than the others. So what could also be playing out here, and remember even that lobby group were making that statement in Bungoma, what could also be here is uh, Wetangula is reminding William Ruto that you must give Bungoma a special attention in respect to your presidential bid, whether it's in the past or not. Thirdly, is the Mulembe isolation protest. The Mulembe nation had been protesting that on state appointments they've been left out despite of the power sharing deal. And that is why the new DPP, Ongonga Mulele, Mulele, people are asking how did he get his way there? He got his way there by a political lens. Because of the political lens. Because William Ruto went where was going to Kakamega. He comes from Kakamega. I'm told he has made two appointments. There is this one Mulele and there is also the other one that was made, which are two from Kakamega. So Probably there was a lobby. You know, there is some lobbying that was to lobby for this position to go to this county, go to this proxy or so, and it flopped. That is why it could have been a protest statement that you are isolating Mulebe Nation. And that is the message that was being passed. Because for even before William Ruto tripped to Western there, there was something that I realized. Number three, Mudavadi Wetangula supremacy. They, if there will be one of the most difficult things, uh, duel, uh, fallout, I, I remember Wetangula saying it would be messy with casualties. Then the fallout between Wetangula and Budavadi will be messy, a more messy with casualties than any other fallout in the political history of this country. Being that they have brothers, you know, when Wetangula sees himself as the most, third most powerful person, I don't think Mudavadi, see, Mudavadi also sees himself as the third most. Mdavadi see Wetangula as his son, as the man he brought into politics. In fact, even in terms of seniority, seniority Mdavadi is more senior. So it could also be Mdavadi Wetangula supremacy battle emerging now. On this one, I will leave it out to look at it clearly. That it is more than what catches the eye. And remember, this emerging as William Ruto is also looking at Oparanya and is trying to work behind the scene to recruit Oparanya on Kenya Kwanzaa wing. It is a matter of time whether that is going to be achieved. Thank you. Let's meet in the next.